when it comes to this kind of stuff. So uh, the easiest way for me to make sure that everyone gets something out of it is kind of find out what each of you do and kind of tailor what we're talking about for that. So you still deliver the same message about building your community, but kind of more applicable to what you guys might need and be able to actually take something home. You know, actually understand and take something home that you maybe can apply. So um, first, since we got five people here, um, <laughs> Huh? Oh yeah. Okay. Five people who uh, will really listen to me. Um, so are here. Um, and so I figured since I'm doing online community, I will show you that I was trying to build a community because I thought it was the other thing, and now I realize I'm, I'm right in the right way I need to be. That was my portion of my community right there. Three of my five. Um, so what do you do? Um, I'd like to have your name and what you do. Uh, my name's Crystal, and I'm an artist. I just finished a public art project, like a community arts project that I crowdfunded for. And then I also do, um, um, I'm going to be giving some talks on crowdfunding to help people learn how to do that. Now that I know how to do it, I'm going to be teaching them. And I do um, creativity coaching. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for people who are trying to <coughs> develop their artwork and they need a mentor. Um, and I make I make art for individuals and okay. for healthcare settings. Okay. Thanks for coming. Katie. I'm Katie. Um, I do a lot of different things. I work part time for Tiffany Community Council, which is a nonprofit. Um, I have a local chats group that's kind of new, and so I'm mostly interested in building, oh. figuring out what to do. We don't have a website. I have a lot of new websites, so I just wonder if there's if there are other things I can do mm -hmm. instead. Right. 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 services for small businesses so I help them with some of their social media stuff I don't like social media so I need to get more into it uh, so I help them with some of their stuff if I had a dollar I don't do any social media for my business so equally I should be doing some stuff. okay cool yeah. all right I'm Leslie and I am a professional volunteer I am fortunate to stay home with my four kids two of them are graduating from high school still have a nine-year-old I volunteer on a lot of levels but specifically for this um, presentation, I um, we just started a new community advocates group at our high school, trying to bridge the parents and the community and the people that work at high school to really build the community around the high school and making it um, someplace we want to be. Awesome. Great. Um, Kiana and Kiara and Jalen, um, would you like to announce who you are and your name? That's great. You first, you're the oldest. Your name and which your name and how old you are. I am nine, and my name is Kiara. My name is Kiara, and I'm eight. My name is Jalen. I'm six. Okay. So, um, the great thing about this conversation is that. All of you guys, what we're going to talk about does not change based upon whatever you're trying to do in your business. And I didn't get to you. I'm sorry, Shelly. We were just saying who we were and basically oh, uh, what you did. It is a new session. Okay. Yes, it is a new oh, session. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be late. I'm sorry. So you're very excited to be out the phone. So your name and what you do. Oh, my name. I'm Shelly Gillespie. I am a book writing success coach. And I help people with other writing projects. Yeah, that's how old I am, and I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my next question. Now you got to be really curious, actually. I wasn't even going to think about that. Um, and you, young man. I'm Miles. I'm one of the organizers here, and I thought this would be some good tips on, on building the community. Okay, great. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Robert Reed. I'm from Tacoma, Washington, originally. Uh, I grew up in um, Tacoma, Washington. I moved out here in 1990, went to the University of Arizona, did not finish left to uh, Illinois, settled back in Chandler in 99. Um, I've married five kids, I'm 20, a 15 year old, and then these three, 
Um, and I did, so how I got into what I'm doing now, I started doing um, an online sports radio show like six years ago with me and a best buddy of mine. It was called Atypical Sports Show. And it was probably the funnest thing I've ever done. I, I'm doing more stuff like that again, but it was great because what we did back then is we got a lot of our listeners using Facebook and Twitter. And what we did, we would pose a question and then people would answer it and then we'd talk about that on the show. So we got a lot of reach, got a lot of community building through that because people were listening, they were actually interested in what we had to say because they said that's what they wanted us to talk about. So we just did it in our quote unquote atypical way. So from there, it allowed me, at that time, me and my wife separated, I had to figure out something to do. So I had to figure out what am I gonna do, I am not making money for sponsorship because it wasn't enough. We had like 5,000 downloads a month, so it was good, but it wasn't enough for sponsorship. So at that time, I had to figure out something to do. So I was riding the bus for like three weeks, and I had a piece of paper that said, I'll do Facebook updates, right? So I went to uh, Dry Cleaners, the guy in Avalon Cleaners, with Ray and Rule, just said, all right, I'll do it. So I just started doing Facebook updates for this guy. And from then, I just created a strategy and a process to be able to connect any business to their targeted audience, providing relevant value and increase more money exposure and traffic. So we're just using social media as a vehicle. We all do this every day. Community building is, this is not out of the realm of what you guys do every day. I'm just bringing it to you on the social media side so you'll understand how to execute it that way. So now, uh, where I'm at right now, I'm um, four employees, um, great so the team that manages company social media marketing profiles. I do consulting and then I set up my satellite office inside social media departments. So that way, in case they don't want someone outside doing it, we give them our strategy and our process for them to execute it internally. So first thing I want to ask, we all ask, how do you build your community with two L's and two L's? Um, the first thing we've talked about, I don't know what other people talk about, I can only talk about what my process is and what I know that works for me. The first thing you're doing in any type of marketing when you're building your community, you have to know who your target audience is. And I know we've heard that all before, but it seems it's always glossed over because if you know your target audience, you know exactly, well, you can make estimations. So let's say, I like being stereotypical. If you know that someone lives in a high scale neighborhood, we well, kind of have an idea of what they might like, their enjoyment, what they do in their free time. All of that is important information because that's what's going to get them to communicate and engage. Not necessarily what you're talking about your business. They will, but that's one of those things that you're going to be able to bridge the gap and create your community because you're providing relevant content for them. So first thing you want to do is identify your demographic. So let's say I'm a dry cleaner in Chandler, or let's have, so I'm a yoga studio in Chandler, and my, my target audience is women 30 to 50, you know, who are married, have kids, and they, try, they, you know, they take care of the kids during the day. Well, if I'm a yoga studio, I think, would I be posting about football, or would I be posting about stuff that women who are 30 to 50 year olds care about, like um, maybe swimming lessons in Gilbert for a dollar, you know, that you didn't know about, things like that, it's, the, it's information that's more pertinent than what you have about your business. Not saying your business isn't important, but when you have a when you have content that gets people to communicate and engage, they're more loyal to you. So you've identified your demographic. That's the first thing. And the reason why I say it's so important to know your target audience is because that's going to help you in all your other marketing you do later, right? So if you're doing SEO, you move over to start doing SEO. You start doing pay per click ads. Well, they're all going to ask you the same thing. Who's your target audience? Because everything is derived upon that, right? So if you know your target audience, you're pretty much clear. All right, I know my target audience, so I kind of have an idea what they like, what's important to them, and then you start looking for that. That's how you build your own community, online community in that aspect. So I would say you identify your demographic, and then you start with a strategy. So a strategy, to me, when we think strategy, everyone thinks of like, I'm executing, I'm going to go, I'm going to basically, bleh, here's my strategy, go get them, get them, get them, get them, get them. And really, in, social, in marketing, 1990, that's what it was all about. You know, when I went to college, like marketing, you gotta throw it all out there. Make sure you're just really aggressive, just keep throwing it out there, you keep doing it, people will come. Now, it's like, okay, wait a minute, I have to think about really what we're doing really what am I about and how can I communicate that in the language that my target demographic would listen to, okay? So it's not necessarily the way you would communicate. It would be the way that they hear the communication. You'll know that because you'll know what platform they're on and I'll get to more of that. Um, so 
we've identified our demographic. That's where we start. And then we create a strategy. And the strategy in this sense is your demographic is going to let you know where you need to spend most of your time on social media. Okay? So if I'm a business owner, so, so me, I, I like doing more consulting and training. I'm not saying I don't have a Facebook presence, but for me, LinkedIn is more valuable because I'm getting right to the decision makers, and those are people that I can show my credibility by groups I join and by the consistency in which I'm communicating. So for me, LinkedIn might be good, but for a yogurt shop, any yogurt shop, you notice they're all next to high schools, right? So they, they're smart. So they're all next to high schools, and the reason why they are, because they know those are the, that's their target demographic, the same thing they're doing. So what they do, a great place for them would be Instagram, because that's where their target demographic's at. The hardest thing for us business owners to do is get out of our head and say, I, I hate Facebook, I hate social media, you know? And that's the hardest thing for us to do, because I talk to, I'm 42 years old, I have to bring up creative ways to tell 60 year old old businessmen that they need to do this, like their corporations need this, you know? And the reason why is because they, all they see is that, <coughs> I don't want to post what I'm eating, and they, you know, that's the first thing they always say, I don't, I don't, nobody cares what I'm eating, and then I just laugh because I'm like, I get where you're coming from, because to me, it's more or less, not you're in this situation, but it's more or less people are like, we're like them when we don't understand something. And they think social media is a technology conversation, but it's actually a sociological conversation. It, technology is really executed, but it's a sociological conversation. How many of you guys do any networking? Anyone does any network? You guys have a networking group? Like networking group, have you guys gone to networking events before, like heard of BNI? You know? So it's the same thing. Think about that. When you join a networking group and you meet a whole group of new people, are you going there to them and say, hey, this is my business. This is where you should really use me. Or are you trying to really have a conversation with them to kind of find out where your common ground is? You know, maybe they're from Washington State. Oh, they like the Seahawks, right? I like them too. So then you kind of want to find what that common denominator is. So then maybe you will do business together. It's no different on social media, except you can reach both exponential people if you really have your target audience uh, defined. So if you go to meet somebody and you're spending, business owners, let's say you charge yourself 100 bucks an hour, okay? And you go to a networking group once a week, for once a week, and then you go to one-on-one -on -one after that. Maybe you meet somebody on one-on-one, and you find out, oh my gosh, this is the worst person I would never do business with them, right? So then you waste your hour and a half of drive time over there to meet with them. I've done it for years, so I know this from experience. So then I'm thinking about, so I've essentially wasted $700 a month of my time to hopefully get one person to give me one referral. And since there's so many much entrepreneurs out there, we can't afford that. You know, spending $700 of our time to maybe get one person. How can we leverage our time? How, excuse me, my kids are being rude. Um, so how can you leverage that time and actually take that time that you would normally have and spend one-on-one -on -one and reach an exponential amount of people with stuff that they might even care about? And that all starts right here, this foundation of identifying who you want to connect to, creating a strategy of where they're at and how you're going to communicate with them, and then the most important thing, second most important thing I would say, would be finding relevant content. I was going to go over stats, but I, I, okay. Social media success to me, uh, the Hitler thing was great. Um, so, so, and the reason why, because I, I really want social media success, I have a, um, a book that's coming out and it's called What is Social Media Success? And everybody wants to know what it is. And really the bottom is so simple, it's just engagement. You know, it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not anything else but engagement because you can't get ROI unless people are talking, right? So what am I talking about ROI for if people aren't talking on my social media platforms? Makes no sense. So what is our focus? Is it ROI or is it engagement? It seems to me that would be engagement because when people are engaged with you, then people are going to share your content, they're going to communicate back and forth, and then you can push them to a place of purchase or to an email subscription or to another place. That's the key. So looking at people where they're engaging at and your demographic, who you would be looking at, average time on site, average pace of purpose, average bounce rate. When you see LinkedIn, average time on site, What's interesting about this is 133 minutes. What's interesting about this, uh, 133 seconds actually. What's interesting about this is that you would think that this would be a lot shorter, average time on site, but this is because people are trying to figure it out. Hmm. Okay? So what are those rates? It's 188 seconds, seconds per yeah. day? Per day. Per, okay. For like when they're going to, and they're really trying to more or less figure it out. Okay? And then what's the bounce rate? So bounce rate means like how often people go there and just accidentally go there. 
that they can go there and just leave. They just leave immediately. Like they actually went there and their bounce rate. And you can say if they go there and just leave, then probably either they made a mistake going there or just really not interested in there. But if your bounce rate's lower, that's really good. Like you want to, I mean, you'll see. And if you do your analytics on social media, you can see your bounce rate. So we talked about engagement. Like engagement is not necessarily, and I had to bring this in there. I have two examples of engagement because we think engagement is really like. Oh, I'm, this is us back and forth. Engagement is your ability to be able to capture people's attention, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's all good, but you've developed content. He, Hitler was great as engagement. That's why he went as far as he did, because people engaged him. He, he engaged them, and people believed him, and it's the same thing, people were loyal to him. Now, the opposite is, he was just as engaging. He didn't have the biggest, he was just as engaging throughout history. No different people followed him. The same kind of, this, of course, no different in the speech, of course, you understand what I'm saying. But it's the same thing, people don't understand the importance of engagement because there's communication. Jim. Sorry. I can't stop it. Can you turn it off? Um, so being engaging is so important because there's a difference. We've learned that engaging is communication. And that's where businesses are really losing because they think engagement is communication. Communication is one way where you're telling them all about your product, all about what you do, all about that, and there's no engagement. And in fact, they don't even see your content anymore. So you're posting that really nobody's looking at. So think about this. When you have your, uh, let's say you have your art, your art business, and you're posting information on those platforms like Facebook, and you're posting information, you see that people, you know, it says how many people you've reached. You see at the bottom it says, this is how many people you've reached. You'll notice that the reach goes down a lot lower when you post something that, let's say, no, nobody really looks at. But what happens, what's really bad about the reach and why you want to watch it is because Facebook only cares about your user experience, right? So if you're not posting stuff, like if your mom joined Facebook and you're engaged back with your mom and you don't talk to your mom for two weeks, Facebook's not showing your mom your, your mother's posts. They don't care that you're related. They're saying, oh, this person doesn't like this information, so we will no longer show them these posts. So how important, going back, how important is it to know your target audience? Because if you don't know what they deem important, they're not seeing your posts anymore anyway. And if they're not seeing your posts anymore, you're essentially updating to nobody. So think about like how everything goes back to the foundation of knowing your target audience. Because that's where you're going to always go back to. Because when I started, I remember I'd wake up in the morning like, what do I post today? Oh my gosh. It would be so arduous, like, oh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to post today. Now, if you know your target audience, you can always go back to like, oh, I don't know what to post today. OK, what would they want to hear? What's going on right now that would make a difference for them that you can provide value for them? And that's what will always give you some content. Could, if you knew a particular person that was in your target demographic, might you go to their page and see what they're talking about? And just go, okay, perfect. I will also talk about that thing today. Well, here's the deal. I wouldn't go to their site and copy that. What I'll do is I'd share their content and I'll go to that. So and so when it comes to when you guys are posting, so I might be getting off this a little bit, but that's a great question because this will help since you guys are all kind of independently doing it. It's more of you guys doing it. So I would, I'm giving you the independent here. Um, so when you're, let's say you're posting, posting is great. Okay, you identify your target audience, you're posting that information, but where you're really going to win without spending money on getting new likes and stuff is you're going to be sharing businesses content who have the same demographic as you, okay? So when you go back to your home page or your Facebook page and has all those pages that you guys like, make sure all of those pages are all businesses that have the same target demographic that follow you. Because when you share their content or like and comment on their stuff, their audience sees that. So you're essentially increasing your reach by leveraging your relationship with them. You understand what I'm saying? I'll talk slower because I really talk fast. No, no I totally get what you're saying. I, I'm a believer that you don't, copy is not the right word, but I'm going to say copy. You don't copy someone who's doing something you're, you need to be different. Oh, this is it's, great. Yeah. So this is great. So that's why I haven't articulated myself clearly. Mm -hmm. So those businesses that have the same target demographic that you would share their content, you're not copying. Yeah, yeah. copying is not you, right. You're essentially, but here's the thing about it. If you go into, I'm just bringing it back to the network. If you go to networking and you provide value and you tell somebody else about somebody else's business, are they going to be more loyal to you? You're not necessarily saying they're better. Of course, it wouldn't be the same IT company, IT company. You're like, they're awesome too. You know, we we'll do that. But you might want to like an SEO company that's doing really well and posting some great information about IT, right? And so you share their content on your page because those same people in the SEO need IT. 
So you're not copying, you're actually, you're, it's supposed to work where it's kind of like building your reputation by they know who you're associated with. So if you're, if you're with the Boys and Girls Club and that's who you really support, like you're a volunteer back there, you're a volunteer. So all those pages that you really believe in volunteer, that's just another way when you're sharing for people to look and say, oh, that's what they're about, right? Oh, that's what they deem important. Oh, I like them because they're, oh, they're fans of uh, the chairman compadres also. That's great. So am I, you know? This is all like ploys to be able to find that whatever that connection would get somebody to be engaged with what you have to offer. Yeah, think of it like a game. It's like it's not like you're always sharing the right. content. It's just like occasionally if, 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 if it would help you build your brand. Right. Really exactly. And so you, like, just like you're sharing a business or anything like that, you want to be the best people. I was in real estate for seven years, right? And those, you know, there's always the realtors who say, nobody ever refers to me business. You know, there are always those guys who complain about it but they're always the one who never referred. So my theory is that if I referred everybody that I ever came in contact with in real estate or in business, I should never have to work again. So that's essentially what my business is now. It's like an agency. I just go out and just give other people business that are in my realm of understanding. So think about it that way. Think about it that way in social media. If you're referring or if you're a yogurt shop and let's say you're in a high school, wouldn't you, would you be sharing if Johnny did really good in the, in the wrestling championships and he won? You share that on your page, because Johnny's mom likes that, okay? That high school is really happy that you shared that they won state championship in something, right? So that things like that, that's how we're doing. We're just connecting to their demo by accessing and providing value for them, because that's the best way, they're, that's the easiest way you're gonna do when you're networking, that's the way you're gonna do it. You're not gonna really talk about yourself as much until you build that relationship, and then you can interject your business, because nobody buys from you in the first couple weeks anyway. I mean, it's not like you go to a networking group and you sit down there and say, yeah, I'm great, and then somebody says, I got business for you. That's the hardest thing that people complain about networking groups, because you have to build those relationships so long. You think, I started the Chandler Chamber in 2012, and I didn't get a, I, I went to groups, I went, I got a leads group, and I'm still in it, and I didn't get my first lead from them, and somebody using me for a year. Because it's like anything, they had to see the consistency that they could trust you. So when you, same thing in social media, if you're posting once a month, that's great. Then post once a month for the rest of your life, okay? Don't post once every three months, you know what I mean? Because whatever you're doing, just be consistent in it. If you're posting three times a week, then post three times a week without fail. Because businesses just look at that like, oh, they're consistent, you know? They're consistently have their message out there, and they look at that the same way. That's how we are as human beings. That's why it's such a sociological conversation versus technical, because that's just how we are. We, oh, we see somebody doing that every day, like, oh, that's awesome, they do that every day. As long, and, and think about it is, businesses always ask, well, if I'm posting every day, is it gonna be annoying? Yes, it will be annoying if you haven't identified your target audience. If, I'm, if I like golf, and Golf Smith is a uh, Facebook page, and they post all the time about golf, I have no problem that I see that. But if they start posting about women's shoes, I'm irritated. Like, why are you posting to me about women's shoes? You know, because I don't wear those anymore. So, uh, like, so I look at it like they, by, they haven't done their good job on their end of target demographic. You guys, anytime you're irritated with anything on social media, it's because they've done a bad job identifying who they want to connect to. That's, and that's what causes the bad, oh, social media is so horrible, and it's just, you know, we eat, and everybody just takes pictures of their food, and I don't want to let people know what I'm doing, you know? And I get that, but that's such a small percentage of it. You know, like, I always look at, Right, this Wallace D. Wallace, Science of Getting Rich, always says, like, if someone's doing something in a certain way, making money, then you would do it that same certain way. Social media would not be around if it wasn't effective yeah. if people weren't benefiting financially. It just wouldn't be around. That's how we are. So somebody's doing it and making money. Somebody has a way to where they're actually not even money, but where they're getting value from it, and which is increasing their bottom line, and either money, exposure, or traffic. And either way, exposure or traffic brings you more money if more people are seeing it, especially if more people in your target audience are. So we've all, engagement, so let's say, we've, I did, let's say we found our audience, right? And then we found content that we really think they want to communicate with, about, right? And then we found where they're at. They're on LinkedIn, okay, it's great. So we're posting on LinkedIn, we post it five days a week, we're doing it consistently, we're joining groups, we're uh, communicating, and all of a sudden people start responding back. And I don't know how many Facebook pages you guys have seen where there's, there might be 10,000 likes and people are communicating and nobody from the business is talking back to them. I'm like, they're killing themselves. Like, how could you not communicate when people are actually, 
we don't earn this for you to get you to like something, even you might laugh your ass off, right? You think it's the funniest thing in the world, but you still keep scrolling, right? Even though you think it's hilarious, you might not even click like. So the fact that somebody even clicks like, even comments on your brand, and you're not engaging back with them is a business killer. Because it's like walk, somebody walking into your storefront saying, and you don't say hello to them. They don't have to like your stuff. They don't have to like your stuff. They don't have to comment. They don't have to uh, retweet you. They don't have to share what you have to offer, but they're doing it. So you have somebody who's engaging your brand. And what's that person, once you get engaging with them, then you can leverage that relationship to bring you more. So engagement to me is the ultimate social media success because when people are communicating and you're able to engage, you're actually controlling your audience and able to push them to a place where you want them to either purchase or be able to sign up for something or be able to be able to just join your, your network because we're all trying to really build our network bottom line. Every business is trying to build their circle network of people who they refer, they can use and refer their business. So when you're doing Social media, I kind of was trying to think of what is the reason why people do social media? It's either connecting with new clients or connecting with clients, maintaining a flow of communication that they already have with their clients, or integration with tech, other marketing techniques, either flyers or uh, newsletters or press releases, things like that. So there's different reasons why people join or why, why, they, why they're posting on social media or why they even join social media. I, I wanted to put this in there because I don't know, you don't know what you don't know. You know, and I don't like to assume anything when I go speak because I don't wanna, I, I deal in my world, I'm not a technical guy. Like, I have to have everybody, I have to have Jeremy or somebody who's on a team fix anything that goes wrong with my phone. I'm not really good at technical, so I really had to hone down what Facebook business page is so you guys get an idea of what your strategy is when you're inside the business page. So, it's exposure business at all times. This is where most of your marketing specials will be posted. The purpose of the like page posts are to engage and educate your network about your business and engage them to communicate back and forth with each other. So and if they're, that's the greatest thing. If you're posting and they're communicating with each other and you have banter between them, that means all of their people are saying they're communicating on your page and they can't get any better than that. Well, it could, but. Leverage the people we already have. 
internally we all we have enough business within us of people that we know that we just haven't leveraged those relationships consistently and it's the same thing if you can leverage the people you have who already used you and get them on your page to talk about you then that bridges the gap of the connection that you will need for someone to actually get in business okay i'm um getting daily updates from a gentleman who calls himself evil ball genius and he's supposedly like the top copywriter in, in Ireland or England or something like that. And his stuff sounds very solid. And I was taken aback about three days ago when he said, likes don't matter. He says, it doesn't buy you customers necessarily. People may do it like a knee jerk. I don't remember the rest of his mm -hmm. rationale. But how do you react to that, that he says likes don't matter? It's getting people to engage in a way that actually moves them on, I oh. think, to the next. Oh, I think I'll oh, 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 okay. Yes. I bet you he would say, that likes don't matter if you are not building engagement. He would probably say something like, "You have to have an audience that's engaged, you not comments. just be live." Comments, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's like yeah. that's like those awesome headings that everybody was there. Likes don't matter, or Facebook sucks, and then you're like, "Wow, why does Facebook suck?" And they're like, "It sucks because <laughs> so, because yeah, they're right." So yeah, likes. I understand what he's probably trying to say. Likes. He's probably saying, he's saying the same thing I'm saying. Yeah, likes don't matter because there's a lot of people with 100,000 likes and they post and three people like it, right? So it doesn't matter. What matters, I'd rather have 50 people who love my product than I post and 25 people engage, you know, versus 1,000 I post and two people like it. Who cares? Yeah. You know, so likes don't matter. Relevant likes matter mm -hmm. and, and relevant content matters. I'm just going to give you some tips, and now this is what works for me does not mean that you have to do this, but this is what has worked for me in my five years of business, and I just kind of come up with, you know, you said the second point about standing out, you know, standing out in your world, um, you, still, you don't have to, you can be authentic without being personal, okay, you don't have to like share your personal problems to be authentic, you understand, like there's such a difference between authenticity and being, and being a little just too personal TMI, you know? You can be authentic about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, what it's like to be an artist, what it's like to be a graphic designer, how the process of what you've learned, all of those things, when you guys are single <coughs> entities of your business, that's who they look at, that's where you're gonna really win is being authentic. Because there, there's people out there who are just looking for that type of communication because they're dealing with the same thing, okay? And then when it comes to entrepreneurs and me doing the same thing, I connect to business owners because I know what it's like to start from zero. I know what it's like to have, when you have to wake up in the morning, have your mind clear for you to be able to produce what you want or you're screwed, you know? So those kind of things, we're talking in the realm of what you know, but applying it to really your target audience and what would be important to them. So one of the things we were talking about, here's the ultimate, you know the ultimate content post on any social media platform is, is how do I, how do I take what's relevant, integrate it into my business, look like I'm not selling and make it funny, right? <laughs> you know, like that's the ultimate post of what we want to do. Because A, if we get relevant content that people are talking about, or you'll get more reach because more people are talking about it. Then it applies to your business, so it's like, cool, that's like relevant to my business. And then it looks like you're not selling because you're just saying something like, let's say I had, this is a perfect example, was I had a client, Mr. Whipple's car detail. And when it, remember the hailstorm that happened like two, maybe two years ago or a year ago, that health store everybody's car was jacked up. Well, he's a car, he uh, does auto body, you know? So he he had a post on there that was something about that and a picture of a car and what he would do. And it was like a funny little video, like best post of the year. Because it was so relevant to what was going on and it had to do with his business and it didn't look like he was selling, but it was still relevant and it made people laugh. So something like that, you know, and we all have stuff like that we even know ahead of time when you think about it. You know kind of the things in your realm that is happening throughout the year, like maybe um, the artist um, the artist convention that everybody knows about, you know, you know that's coming, right? So there's things that you guys know all in your business that's already happening. You guys being out in front of that, knowing that, will really help your content reach more people, because that's what we're trying to reach more people so they be more people communicate and engage. <coughs> So, I, I wrote this out because I wanted to make sure I remember this part. Um, a lot of people say, well, can I share my Facebook to Twitter and all that stuff? Yes, you can, but it won't be as effective. Because it's like, 
saying, can you communicate in different languages? People on Facebook, it's a different way of communicating on LinkedIn than you would on Facebook than you would on Twitter. So you're communicating in three different ways, and you're trying to merge all those together. And the reason why those automated things come into play is because at, as a whole, we're always trying. Corporate is always trying, not saying bad about corporate, but corporations are trying to basically make this social media thing working. So the only thing they can do is we gotta automate it. But social media is opposite of automation. You can't automate it, a relationship. You can't automate connection and engagement. You can't automate the authenticity what it is like when you're posting something relevant that's happening in our world today. You know, so that's really where the that's where us as small businesses we can kill it. We're not we we're on the same playing field as corporations because we know what's going on in our target audience better than they do. Okay, we know what's going on in our local communities better than they do. So we can build our community. Community. There's a Dairy Queen can't mess with mom and pop yogurt shop in the same area if that mom and pop yogurt shop has a great social media or online strategy because they know what's going on in the local neighborhood, they're gonna go there. So think about this as a way of any business being able to level the playing field with the companies that really are trying to do it because I, like, like as far as networking groups, I see a lot more T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, independent reps going into local BNIs, go local because they're trying to execute it some way, they're trying to get into the local area but they can't do it with social media because they don't even get that. It's all about relevant content that's important to that community. And from a corporate standpoint, they don't know what's going on in each individual community to do that. But you guys do. So you guys have the angle and the, and the advantage when it comes to that. My social summary is this about everything we're talking about. Is being consistent, engaged, and measure your effectiveness. And you're measuring your effectiveness by engagement. So there, right now, this, uh, it's called Sprout Social. Or you can use your, even your Facebook analytics. You guys look at what you posted that month. See what has the most reach. See what people are communicating and engaging about. And then take that relevant content to the next month. So like what we do, here's a straight, this is exactly what my company does. It's very simple, rock, not rocket science. We sit down, we go over a, a, a social media questionnaire. Ask us 12 questions about your business to get clarity as possible, what your target audience is, what's the tone you want to project, what separates you from other businesses, what content ideas, what communities, associations you want to connect to, a couple other questions. Get all that information, then you guys create a, then we create a strategy, which is your target audience, everything written out, your target audience, what you want to connect to, and then you go look for that content online and post it in whatever platform to get people to communicate and engage. So once you do that for a month and you're done, then you go look at your report and say, all right, how did we do? Well, who was communicating? What content did we produce? What were people communicating? Which posts had the most reach? And then you take that post, whatever is most engaging, and take it to the next month and improve upon it. So if you're doing that consistently, improving upon every post and with the content that makes a difference, then you're proving that every month, then you're really drilling down on what your community was deems important, what they want to communicate about. When you ask them what tone, do you leave it wide open, or do you Give them some ideas. Like well, Tom, we, I give an example. So, like Dilly's Deli was a client we started with, yeah. and they're like, and they have a college one, and then they have one in Chandler, and then they have one in Scottsdale. So, the Scottsdale. Scottsdale. So, um, so the one in the college town was more that their tone was outgoing, edgy. You know, the one in Chandler was community oriented, family oriented, and the one in Scottsdale was business oriented because they closed at four. So it was more business oriented, uh, serious, informational, you know, things like that. So that kind of gives you, all it is is just a format. All I did is set this up, just a format for us to go back and kind of, oh, that's what we're doing, you know? Because yeah. if you're, you forget, you're like, oh, that's my strategy. That's my target audience. Oh, that's the tone I want to project. Oh, that's the content. Okay, so then when you're mixing in what your business is, as well as what's going on in the target community, that's when you create that value because they're learning about you and you're measuring what's effective. You know, you know at the end of the month, like, oh, they didn't really didn't like those posts about um, soccer, you know, I guess we're not posting that anymore. So you kind of know. So those are my three things that I really feel is a, you can't do everything, okay? So here's the deal. It's not gonna it's not gonna save your business if your business is struggling. It's not gonna blow your business up, but what it will do, it will maintain the consistency that you guys are doing on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay, I've been there. I know it's like on a, all the time that we have to handle in life, and we our business is running. Okay, we're doing our business, and then if everything worked from eight to five, nobody bothered us. We'd get everything done. But then there's life that happens. There's I got to do this. Oh shoot, I closed the deal. That's great. Then I got to do paperwork. I got to do all of these things that we're just trying. All we're doing is just 
making the business owner really have something that they know that they're doing consistently, that at least they know they're getting their name out there on a consistent basis. And really, with, with the foundation of social media and a target audience and being able to execute that, you really can grow your business. You really can. Because you're training everybody in the next 10 years. Your people are 18 years old who you sell to. That's all they'll communicate that way. They'll be 28 years old, and that's this is how they're going to be talking. So right now is where you set yourself up to be setting up to communicate that way. And it's really a value you really can really make. You can really increase your bottom line by a, a strategy where you're consistently doing it. Because it's the same thing when you're networking. If you consistently network for a year or two, you're going to get business. So it's no different here. It's like, I, I don't want to make it as simple as, but really no different. It's the consistency which you're able to do it. You know, so um, that's all I have. I know I scattered around a little bit, but uh, maybe a lot, but um, just keep in mind, like I don't want this, you guys to leave here thinking that you got to do everything. Just pick one thing. Don't pick all social media platforms. If you got time to do one, just pick one. Then. Pick one and be good at that. Pick one where your uh, target audience at, is at and just be good at that, even if you do it twice a week. I guarantee you, if you did it twice a week, you'd feel better about it, you'd go close more deals. That's just how life is, because you know you're doing something consistently. So. Would you consider two of the minimum you should do that? Uh, minimum, I, well, minimum, I'd say five days a week. It's like you're going to work. Like five posts a week, and then there's a strike. But that's what it, but, but that's you by yourself. So if you're posting two really good posts a week, then that's good. But make sure if you're posting twice, then make sure it's really good stuff. And should it always be on the same day, then? Mm, no, I, I would say I would try to get two different days. No, I mean, <coughs> you're always Monday and Thursday. Is that necessary that you always say Monday and Thursday? You no, know, you don't have oh, to. Okay. Yes, and maybe it might be, that's, but. That's yeah. a whole different strategy. Yeah. I and mean, I've got a teenager that is like, oh, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow, you know, and mm -hmm. she's wait like yeah, and, and I think, and that's where it comes back to measurement. You so, don't know until you measure it. So you do it for a week, you do it for a month. You say, oh, Monday, Thursday, you worked that week. It didn't work that week. That's where it's all. Everything we're doing is just trying it. But the only way to know if we're working is for measuring if it's effective or not. Do you have favorite analytics? Uh, I use Sprout Social. Sprout I have a team use Sprout Social. Social. SproutSocial.com. Yeah, just SproutSocial.com. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I was. Um, And, um, and I just thought, you know, usually it's just like, you know, maybe three paragraphs. 
but I don't think it's necessarily how far along it is anymore. No, is it? Yeah, the reason I asked is I have heard that in order to get a presence and be counted on Google and rank in the SEO and all that, you have to have 500 words. And I've been knocking myself out trying to make sure I have something important and worth sustaining 500 words about. So I'm not posting as often as I need to. But if I knew, and I'm going to take your word for it, that it doesn't have to be as long. I get a lot more out there. That's what I'm never nervous about. So when you tell me that you're, you have to post that you're, you're ranking on Google, all that stuff, to me, that's like the cart before the horse, you know? Well, that's what everybody tells you. Yeah, so and you then, listen to what they tell you. Don't, yeah, listen, like, don't listen to SEO people. Yeah. First of all, Google hates SEO yeah. and actively tries to fight against it and destroy it. Just, Google likes interconnectedness. Just get people looking at your stuff. Like I know that from the IT side. Like they like go to Google's website for like what webmaster should do. They'll tell you what they want to say. It's not a secret. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's so the, the dissemination of information when it comes to social media, when people don't understand something, that's when people make a lot of money. You know, when business when business owners know that they need to do something, they're willing to do everything. Like, oh gosh, I heard I need to do social media. I need to do SEO. So all these companies who have no idea are coming up there. You need to do this. You need to do this. So they're running around. I heard this. I heard this because everyone's looking for the golden key when it comes to social media. Looking for that one answer that I need to do this, this, and this, and I get this. And this is not the conversation for that. All we know that you need to do this, this, and this doesn't promise you this. But I'm promising more people look at it. You know what I mean? So there's no golden answer. All there is is just being consistent, just like you do in business, you know? And SEO and that stuff like that. If you're writing blogs, if that's all you're holding on to, that like if that's your only thing, like I gotta write five million words for SEO ranking, there's other I'll stuff. Let go. Yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. Let that go. go. Do do something yeah. more. Take those five hundred words and make sixty ten posts out of those, okay? And save those and post those on Facebook, you know? There's there's more uses of your time. To me, I think for a business owner, it's just all about being very clear about what you're doing. Don't worry, there's not a right or wrong. Other people are doing, talking, doing great things. I'm not saying they're doing wrong. Just do what you can do, you know? And that consistency yeah. will produce. I mean, produce. for instance, I'm a words. I write books, I help people write books. I had an instance where I just got so infuriated because there was a big organization, and one of their headlines was Y-O-U-R, and it was supposed to be Y-O-U-R, uh, Y-O-U plus R-E. And I actually contacted the guy from that organization, wrote back major embarrassment, and I know it's so awful that we did that, we should look better, and I'm thinking, should I write a blog about that? Maybe I should, because I've written blogs about those it's and it's and those kind of things, because I see it repeatedly. Am I yelling into the wind? Should I shut up about it? It just seems like people are miscommunicating more and more. Yeah. And one of one of your other people here today, the T O O, and he meant T O. I'm sitting there, ah, and I guess people don't care anymore. Well, the, 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 this is a perfect example right there. That's easy. You could write that out. How long would it take you to write something like that? Out? Exactly. Do that. Okay. Okay, because that's your strength. You don't have to go outside of your realm of ex experience to establish your credibility. Okay. You don't write about stuff for 500 words that you're sitting there like this. That's not that's not business worthy time, you know. Okay. So you know what you know. There's a plenty of experience of things that annoy you. This is what annoys me on businesses. Cut and paste that. Show people what they do and say this is the importance of separating yourself as a wordsmith, separating yourself in your industry of really paying attention to detail and establish your credibility in that. And plus, that's not stuff that's hard for you to do, right? So you want to do that. Yeah. You can do that. So and that's, that's what you should do. That's much more You're right. You have been the best guide this whole this whole day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, seriously. Okay. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, you guys. You. Um, happy posting. <laughs> it should be. Right? It should be. It should be happy posting because it's only happy posting when you don't know what to post and you're stressed out about posting. But if you're really clear about what you're posting, you're just like, hey, this is me, this is my strength, this is my forte, this is what I do, it becomes a lot more easier. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, I